Hello and welcome to a new video. Happy New Year. It is now 2024. I thought I would do a cozy little wrapped up of 2023 um, of all the books I read that year. Look at my Goodreads. I'm in my pajamas. I've, ca I've got a fireplace going. I've got the Christmas decorations still up. So I thought it would just be a cozy little fun look back at the year. Um, and I love looking at my like Goodreads. Um, my year in books things so that is what we're going to do so 2023 my year in books i have 30,624 pages and 100 books read so my goal was 100 i made it to 100 i think last year i made it past 100 this year I made it to 100 like a week ago and I just was like, you know, what? I'm taking I'm taking some time off. So, um, but yeah, my shortest book was um, Tangles and Treason by Nancy Warren. It's a novella, 53 pages. I read most of this series, this Vampire Knitting Club series this year, and it has become one of my favorite cozy mystery series. It was really, really enjoyable. I loved the characters. This was a prequel following the main male character um like hundreds of years before because he's a vampire so he's really old um before the content of the main series and then my longest book is miss cassie claire chain of thorns what is there to say about this book other than it broke me so much it was brilliant it was amazing so well written it did destroy me emotionally though. Um, it doesn't surprise me that this is the longest book and it's probably one of the only long books I read this year to be quite honest. So, um, but I loved it. Average book, average book length in 2023, 306 uh, pages. Cool. Love it. Most shelved. It's always Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone or at least always a Harry Potter book. Um, what can I say? I reread it like every year. Um, this year, my friend and I started doing a reread. We've only done the first two, but she's never read them. And obviously I have. Um, so I was going to do like a reread with her, which is fun. Um, my least shelf book is actually kind of surprising to me. Um, Coffee, Cream Pies, and Crimes by Harper Lynn. It is the 11th book in the Kate Bay mystery series. I just recently read this one, but I read the whole series um, this year and last year. Um, and I adore this cozy mystery series. This wasn't my favorite, but only because like it was very like open ending and I want to know what happens next and she hasn't announced the 12th book so I don't know when it's coming or what but I really enjoyed this one they also switch narrators which I did not love like the actress whose um, recording is different not a huge fan of that but um, overall I love this book I give it a five out of five stars I love this series I am surprised more people have not read this book um, because it's amazing and if you like mysteries and you like a little bit of romance you would like the Kate Bay mystery series so you should check it out my average rating for 2023 is 4.7 um, which does not surprise me this happens every year I rate books very easily like most books I read I'm gonna give it five stars um, a four or five for you to get something lower it means like either a just like genuinely didn't enjoy the book or b it was bad like bad bad so we can talk more about that later um i think this was the same one as last year too highest rated book on goodreads is heartstopper volume four um i did a reread of the heartstopper novels um graphic novels before season three of the show came out um i'm pretty sure i read them all for the first time last year so i think this is the same highest rated book as 2022 um and it has a 4.6 average rating which is correct like honestly you couldn't get a more perfect book than heartstop or any of them um so yeah that i totally agree with that my first review of the year i don't write a lot of reviews i'm just gonna be real with you very very rarely do i write a review on goodreads because I don't know it just doesn't seem super useful to me i'm not going back to look at it usually um i guess if other people wanted to read them but do people want to read my reviews i don't really think so 
Anyway, I guess I wrote a review for The X-Hex by Aaron Sterling, which frankly, if I remember rightly, I read that in like May or June. I read that like not that long ago, um, which I think really paints the picture of how often I write reviews. Um, but I wrote 3.75 stars. I enjoyed this but didn't completely fall in love with it like I wanted to. I think I overhyped it a bit in my head. I really enjoyed the story but I wish the characters had had more time to really convince me they had a connection. I stand by that. It was a fun read but it was just forgettable. Like at this point, however many months ago I read this, I don't really remember the plot or anything stand out about it so it is what it is. Now, for the books I read in 2023, I'm going to read them all. Some of the highlights I might tell you about, um, and if I have a rating on here, I'll read you the rating, but it doesn't show my rating for all of them actually, so scratch that, I won't tell you the rating. Um, but yeah, let's get into my books for 2023. So I started the year with Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill, fun little graphic novel. I read A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kamimer, Barbarian's Prize and Barbarian's Mate by Ruby Dixon. Um, I continued the A Curse So Dark and Lonely series. I read A Heart So Fierce and Broken and A Vow So Bold and Deadly. I will touch on that in that I kind of ruined my reading year by reading that series at the beginning of the year because those were my best books of 2023 and I didn't top them for the rest of the year. Um, and I felt that, like I felt that nothing that I read was as good as the Curse of Dark and Lonely series of, that I read in the beginning of January. So it is what it is. Next, I have Barbarian's Touch and Barbarian's Taming by Ruby Dixon. I have Forging Silver into Stars by Bridget Kimmerer, which is the spinoff um, from the Curse of Dark and Lonely series, waiting for more news about the next one in that. Um, Next, I read Blind Side by, Blind Side by Candy Steiner, um, Tongue Twister. I gave that one a five stars. Looking back, I remember nothing about it. Um, I read Chain of Iron and Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare. Ruined me, tore my heart out. Like, it ended great, but also heartbreaking. Um, I'm excited to continue into the Cassie world as we do. Um, I joined book clubs this year. I even ended up forming my own book club. This is totally new territory for me. Um, and the first one that I read in my friend's book club is All Good People Here by Ashley Flowers. And I went into this book with such low expectations because it was a thriller. Um, it was written by like a true crime podcast girl. And I was like, I just don't, I'm not, I'm not a thriller reader. I've never liked one, but this book was really, really, really good. It was fun. It was easily digestible. It wasn't too violent. It was interesting. It had a reliable narrator. That's one of my issues with thrillers. A lot of the times is an unreliable narrator and I just don't have the patience for them. Um, but this one was really, really good. Next, I read Barbarian's Heart by Ruby Dixon. I read a lot of Ice Bar I Planet Barbarians in the beginning of the year. Um, and then I read the Cruel Prince series. I read The Cruel Prince, The Wicked King, and The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black, which first one I was like, okay. Second one I was like, why the hell am I reading this? Third one, brought it all together in the end. I adore this series. I am now a Holly Black stan. Jude and Carden mean a lot to me. Um, I also read the, the Tea Dragon Tapestry and the Tea Dragon Festival by um, I forgot her name, Katie O'Neill, um, and those were fun. I read Love and Other Dis Disasters by Anita Kelly, which honestly, I forgot that I read this. It was like a book that had an interesting premise, but just really fell flat in the writing for me, so I didn't love it. Um, speaking of books I didn't love, I read, I forgot I read all these this year, goodness. I read Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. By Gabrielle Seven, which is quite possibly the worst book I have ever read. And I read, there's another book in this wrap up this year that I also really hated, but I think I would say I hate this one more because it was like bad from the get go. Um, the characters were horrible. They were horrible to each other. They were horribly written. 
Um, the setting was unclear, this, the characters were messy, the plot was messy, I didn't understand why the characters hated each other, I didn't understand the video game thing, I did not understand the plot twist, if you can even call it that. There's nothing I hate more than like a big violent thing happening at the end, being like, oh, plot twist, somebody died. Like, ugh, screw off, bro. Like, I want real connection. I want characters. And the fact that everybody and their mother was talking about this book and they were talking about how it's just such a good friendship book and blah, blah, blah. literally, no, do not read this book. I, I returned this book. To Amazon. I hated it so much. And I don't want to make this just about um, all the books that I really hate. Like, I don't want to just complain, but this genuinely was the worst book I've ever written, um, ever written, ever read. Um, yeah, bad writing, bad plot. I will not be picking up any books by this author in the future. Um, and I will happily tell people that I didn't like this book. I do not recommend this book. And I know I'm coming off strong, but genuinely it was, that was hard. That was also a book club book, so whew, whoops. I read Mooncakes. I can't see the author's name. It's too, the font is too small. Um, it was fine. Um, I read Stocking and Spells by Nancy Warren. Love the Vampire Knitting Club series. I reread the Hunger Games series, The Hunger Games Catching Fire, and Mockingjay by Suzanne Collins. I read a poetry collection called Girl Made of Glass by Shelby Lee. I read Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. Also not a very good book, but at least better than Tomorrow, Tomorrow, and Tomorrow. Um, for my little uh, vampire, knitting, vampire Knitting Club marathon, I read Pearls and Potion, Lace and Lies, Baubles and Broomsticks, Fair Isle and Fortunes, Cat Paws and Curses, Popcorn and Poltergeist, Garters and Gargoyles. That's a lot of tongue twisters. I read Spider-Man, Spider-Gwen, um, Sitting in a Tree, a collected comic. It was great. Um, more Vampire Knitting, Knitting Club. I read Diamonds and Daggers, Herringbone and Hexes, Ribbing and Runes. Adored them all. I read Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard, which was actually a reread that I read for a book club. First one was great fun. Um, I read Blood Moon by Jillian Graves, cute little novella. I read Cozy Mystery, Live and Let Chai by Brie Baker. I read Arch Nemesis and Supernova by Marissa Meyer. Absolutely phenomenal. The only books that come close to A Curse of Dark and Lonely this year, really. Well, and The Cruel Prince. Um, I read Avatar the High Ground, adored that one. I read No Good Tea Goes Unpunished by Brie Baker, another fun cozy mystery. I did my Heartstopper um, reread, like I mentioned, um, volume one, volume two, volume three, and volume four, all by Alice um, Osmond. I read Glass Sword by Victoria Aveyard, another really fun read. Um, I read The Stand-In by Lily Chu, which was a rom-com that I surprisingly really, really loved. I've said it before, I don't love celebrity romances, um, but this one really won me over. I really f had fun with it. That was for a book club between me and my friends. Um, IRL, can you believe it? Um, I read Tangles and Treason and Mosaics and Magic by Nancy Warren, which I believe, um, closes out that series and it was beautiful. I loved it. So much fun. Um, I read Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston, a reread book because the movie came out this year and it was so phenomenal. I loved it so much. I read Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood, which brought my love back for Allie Hazelwood that the last book had kind of shattered just a little bit. Um, I read The Four Leaf by Lee Jaquat, which was a novella, which was okay. I read Avatar um, volumes two and three of The High Ground, loved it. I read The Solitaire, uh, I read Solitaire by Alice Osman. Very, very good book. Very much enjoyed it. Listen to the audiobook that is read by the actress who plays, um, the sister in the show, which was really enjoyable. I read King's Cage by Victoria Aveyard. I read Harry Potter, Sorcerer's Stone and Chamber of Secrets. I read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson, as well as Good Girl, Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. This is when I listened to The X-Hex by Aaron Sterling, and then I read As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson. Um, the first two, fantastic, fantastic, love the books. There was one part in the first one that I thought was uncalled for, and I think that she should be um, psychologically tested, but As Good As Dead is the worst finale of a series I have ever read. I don't know what happened to the author and why she thought that was an appropriate book to write, why she ruined the ending for these characters that we had grown to care for so much. 
what she did. It was horrible. I hated it. I hated every second. I don't think she should have written it. I don't think it should have been published. I think a third book is a good idea and even like the beginning premise of the story was okay but then you hit like a third of the way through and you're like in the twilight zone wondering what I'm reading wondering how they're selling this book to teenagers um and yeah it was horrible I didn't give it a rating because I hated it so much um and I could go into that for quite a long time anyway I reread The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan in celebration of the Percy Jackson TV show coming out um in my time we are on episode three just came out last week so I'm very very excited excited having so much fun with that um as a cleanse a little rom-com after as good as dead I read Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake it was good it was fine it was the first book I read for my book club which is exciting oh it was the second book actually um A Good Girl's Got to Murder was the first one um it was okay it wasn't great but it was fun I reread Twilight by Stephanie Meyer because why not um I read that with my friends IRL. I read a little, only two historical romances this year. Can you believe it? I read Romancing the Duke and The Duchess Steel, both by Tessa Dare. Um, and then I continued my Percy Jackson reread. I read The Sea of Monsters, The Titan's Curse, and The Battle of the Labyrinth, all by Rick Riordan. Obviously, I loved all of them. And then I finished the Red Queen series and I read War Storm. This was a disappointing finale. It wasn't as bad as the other one I was just talking about, but it was a very disappointing finale. I, she rambled on for so long, like 800 pages, yet said nothing. And the characters made decisions that made no sense, and then it was not wrapped up whatsoever in the end. I know there's novellas, um, and sure, I'll probably read those to see if it answers some of my questions, but you shouldn't have to read a novella after a book to like get closure um, for a series. Also, the, just the decisions the characters made in this book were horrible. Um, Spells for Forgetting by Adrian Young, another book club pick. It was fun. It wasn't great, but it was fun. And then I read The Last Olympian by Rick Riordan, finishing up my um, Percy Jackson and the Olympians reread. And then this year I will move on to Heroes of Olympus. Um, then I read Volumes 1, 2, and 3 of Laura Olympus by Rachel Smith. Adored those. So much fun. Can't wait to read more of them. I just have to buy them. Um, then I read Mr. October by Bethany Weaver, which was a really fun KU romance that I really enjoyed. Perfect little Halloween read. Um, I read Spider Woman, um, Baby Talk and Spider Woman Civil War, but both really good comics. I love them. I actually bought physical copies. I love them so much. Then I read The Romance, The Pumpkin Spice Cafe by Laurie Gilmore. Super enjoyable. I really liked it. I love the Gilmore Girls vibes with a little bit of spice. So I had so much fun reading this one. Next, Kissing Kosher by Jean Meltzer. It was fine, but it wasn't great. Um, Checkmate by Allie, Allie Hazelwood. So, so much fun. Loved it. I loved her pivoting to YA. It was really, really good. Um, next, another book club pick. Uh, book club pick was The Shadows Between Us by Trisha I can't talk anymore I've been talking too much um The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller it was horrible I give it like one star it was horrible horrible writing the main character was insufferable she had no motivation I like Trisha Levenseller I read the other book that she published and I had a lot of fun with it but this one I just felt like was so like aimless and just not good um I read Lizzie Blake's Best Mistake by Maisie Eddings, a really fun surprise pregnancy um, romance with mental health representation. I read volume three of that Spider, one, Spider Woman comic called Scare Tactics. This was the best one. I will be rereading these in the new year um, because I genuinely love them that much. Oh, I read uh, one other um, historical romance. I read Suddenly You by Lisa Kleypas. This one was pretty good. Not as good as the Tessa Dare, but this one was still really good. Um, I read If Only In My Dreams by Kira Andrews. I read this Guardians of the Galaxy comic. I read Coffee, Cream Pies, and Crimes by Harper Lynn, which I previously mentioned. Um, I read A Boy Called Christmas by Matt Haig. This was a reread for my book club, but also for the Christmas season. It is easily like a Christmas cr classic. I love it. I read Single and Ready to Jingle um, by Piper Rain, a really fun Christmas rom-com. It was really cute. I loved it the best friend's brother aspect and just all of it. It was so cute. I read This Winter by Alice Osman. I listened to that on audio. It was a really cute novella. Um, 
I just love all those characters so much. And then I read volume five that just came out this month or last month um, and adored that for Heartstopper. It was really, really good. And I can't wait to see where it goes um, and just kind of see as these characters grow up and kind of close out the story. It's gonna be great. And then um, I read, so show more books, it was one more book. I read Solo for the Season by Martha Keys, which was another really cute, um holiday romance it was really cute uh and they had like such fun setting like the snow they were in the mountains at a cabin loved it then the last book i read is the only nonfiction book i read and that is body kindness by rebecca scritchfield this was one recommended to me by my therapist it was kind of like cringy at times but it was cute so and my battery's telling me i'm out so i gotta go my last review of the year was for Suddenly You. All I wrote was Trigger Warning Miscarriage. You're welcome. Um, so yeah, that is all the books I read in 2023. I feel like I had some really, really high highs, Curse of Dark and Lonely, some really low lows, Tomorrow, 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 and As Good As Dead. So you win some, you lose some, but that is my 2023 year in books. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you for 2024. I've got some goal videos I want to share, some TBRs, that kind of thing. Um, I don't think I'll do more of my best and worst books. Maybe I will. I don't know. I feel like I talked about it all in here, so I'd just be repeating myself. Um, but if you want to listen to me rant more about tomorrow, 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 I could, but I don't know if I will. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. My camera's dead. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.